and welcome to another video. Now when you're given any function to differentiate, you either use a formula or you use the definition. Now many people run away from the definition because it involves them doing some algebra work. But that's the definition of what this is. Okay, so if your teacher or your professor says you have to take your derivative using the definition, why not don't you just master what to do, what to look out for, and you will be a better off student than what you are right now. So let me show you what you're supposed to know. And once you know it, you will always be happy to do um, derivatives if, when required. It, it takes a longer time, but you'll be ready to do it whenever it's required of you to do it. So what is the definition of a derivative? It just says that you compare the change in the output to the change in the input as the change approaches zero, you're gonna get the derivative. That looks very simple. Let me write it down. This is the derivative, that is the level of sensitivity of the output to a change in the input. But that happens because we assume that we're taking the limit as h goes to zero. What is h? h is that little thing you added to the input. Because ideally your input is supposed to be t, but now we're saying our input is t plus h. But you see, as h approaches zero such that it's almost not there, well, what difference does it make? Because you're comparing the output when h has increased, when t has increased, you've added h to it, you're comparing it to when you didn't add anything, it's just the original function, and then that level of change compared to the small change, t plus h minus t. See? You can remember that. Now, the algebra that's involved in this is what you need to pay attention to. We can now start working on this. So the function we're using today is the function such that if you give this function t, it gives you one over square root of t. So if you give this function t plus h, it will give you one over square root of t plus h. So we can say this is the limit as h goes to zero of when you put t plus h here, you just replace that, that's gonna be one over t plus h on the radical side, minus f of t will be equal to one over square root of t, all over, what is t plus h minus t? That's gonna be just h. See, as h goes to zero, whatever we get on this side is what our derivative is, but at this point, you can't just say h goes to zero, because if you make this zero, everything here becomes undefined. So what you want to do is get rid of this h. And the beauty of this thing is when you work on the top part, eventually you're going to get something that contains h that's going to cancel out this h, and now you're free. So leave this h alone. Whenever you're doing this, don't touch the h. No matter what happens, leave h alone because there's gonna be some h on top that's gonna to cancel out this h. Okay, that's the only thing you need to know. Don't touch this h. You can multiply it, you can do anything with it, but just leave it there, don't distribute it. So let's move on. So this is gonna be the limit as h goes to zero of, now another thing is whenever you're solving algebraic expressions or simplifying them, never have a fraction as part of a fraction. So don't ever write one over two divided by three. This doesn't make any sense because you can as well say this is one over six. Okay, so don't have um, a fraction on top. So why don't we just make this a single term and find the lowest common denominator of what we have here and that's gonna be easy. There are many ways to do this, okay, but I'm just gonna do the easy way. Or you can multiply both top and bottom by the lowest common denominator and which would be this, so I can say, I can actually, let's do that. So the fastest way for you to do this 
is to, this is the lowest common denominator, which is rad t multiplied by rad t plus h. So you can say this is rad t multiplied by rad t plus h. So you have uh, multiplied by rad t plus h. That space is small. Divided by rad t multiplied by rad t plus h. Okay, so this is the fastest way for you to get rid of this issue you have here. Now, if you use this to multiply this term, this is going to cancel this, and what you have left is just rad t. If you use this to multiply this, what you're going to have will be, uh, this will cancel this, and you have minus square root of t plus h. And under, you're going to have just h multiplied by square root of t multiplied by another square root of t plus h. So remember, do not distribute this. This is what we have. And that's your function. This has been simplified by this idea. How did I get these two? Okay, use it to multiply every term and you're going to end up with a clear fraction. You don't have to do multiple steps. Okay, so the next thing is to take the limit as h goes to 0 of an expression that, again, you have two terms here and you're dealing with square roots, radicals, you have to rationalize. Should we rationalize the denominator or the numerator? Remember, rationalize the numerator because it has two terms. You want to make sure you have one term that has h. This top must give you some h to get rid of this h. That gives you the idea that you need to rationalize the top. So you rationalize this top by multiplying this expression by its conjugate. What's the conjugate of this is rad t plus rad t plus h. You see, that's the conjugate. You just change this sign, and you have to divide it by that same value. That's rad t plus rad t plus h. So if you do this multiplication, let me put these in parentheses, what you're going to have on top will be rad t times rad t, and it's going to give you t. Then rad t times this. I'm just going to write it because they will cancel out eventually. So we're going to have rad t times this. It's going to be um, plus square root of t multiplied by square root of t plus h. OK, then we go here. We're going to have minus square root of t multiplied by square root of t plus h. Okay, and finally, we're going to have this multiply this. It's going to be minus t plus h in parentheses. Okay, and everything will be divided by the product of this and this. Now, do not try to spread this out. Just let it be. Remember, we just want to get rid of h. So leave everything the way it is in the denominator. So write it this way. It's going to be h into rad t multiplied by square root of t plus h, okay, multiplied by square root of t plus square root of t plus h. Leave it this way. Let's take care of the top part. Let's erase this. So now, our next step is to clean up the top. We know that this will take care of this, and then you're going to have t minus t minus h, okay? So t minus t minus h, so this is going to be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of t minus t minus h divided by, you know what, I don't want to write this because I know that t minus t minus h is going to give me just h, negative h. So I'm going to write negative h here. Okay, so this is going to be negative h. Now, if that's not a clean line, I want a clean line. Okay, negative h divided by h. Oh, you see that h has shown up because that's the h that's going to get rid of this and our problem will be over in a short time. So we're going to write this again. That's the biggest thing to write. So that's going to be the square root of t, okay, multiplied by rad t plus h. Okay. Multiplied by rad t plus rad t plus h. Okay. So now this can take care of this. And what we have will be the limit 
as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over square root of t multiplied by square root of t plus h multiplied by square root of t plus square root of t plus h. Okay, so at this point, that's terrible. That's terrible. Terrible. Okay. Okay, that's not as terrible, but it's still terrible. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of anything that might create a, a problem for us, we can now take our limit. So f prime of t, because this h is gone, okay? The h is gone. Okay, and we have, when you, you can now do your direct substitution and everywhere you see h, you say it goes to zero. So h here is gonna go to zero, this is gonna go to zero and that's all. So we're gonna have this expression, negative one over square root of t multiplied by if this goes to zero, what you have left is just square root of t. And then this is going to be square root of t plus, if this goes to zero, you have square root of t also. Okay, so that's it. And this expression is the same thing as square root of t times square root of t is going to be t. So this is negative one over t. And then here it's going to be square root of t plus square root of t. That's two square root of t. That's multiplied by 2 square root of t times 2 square root of t. Well, this expression is the same thing as negative 1 over 2t root t. This is an answer. If you want to write your work like this, it's fine, but you don't want to have two t's somewhere. That, that doesn't look good. Okay, so how do we modify this? Well, you can just Write them as exponents, okay? Makes things a lot easier. And then this will be the same thing as negative 1 over 2 t to the 1 multiplied by t to the 1 half, okay? So apply your laws of exponents. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. So it means your answer is going to be negative 1 over 2 t to the 3 over 2. This is another way to write your answer. But some people don't like it this way. Okay, because if you did your differentiation using a formula and you differentiated this using the formula, you bring down the exponent, subtract one, what you're gonna get actually is negative one over two t to the negative three over two. This is a third way to present your answer and whichever way your answer is correct. If this video was good for you and you're not subscribed, I'm recommending now that you subscribe because more of these and many other videos will show up. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.